Representative Brand. Good morning, uh, members of the committee. Um, I've got House File 3224 today, and I've also got an author's amendment. I'm asking that this be uh, laid over for, for possible inclusion in the um, supplemental finance bill. So you're moving that House File 3224 be laid over for possible inclusion in the supplemental finance bill. Okay. Yep. And then you have an amendment? Yep, I have an amendment as well. There is a small drafting error in the number of um, dollars and that sort of thing that people are um, able to use for this. So. I would move um, a one amendment to also be um, be allowed to be on the bill. All right. So the a one amendment is before us. We have it in our packet. There was um, a bit of a, um, a larger amount that was put into the bill, and that's been reduced uh, by this. So, mm -hmm. any other questions, comments? Okay. All in favor of the a one amendment, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. That motion prevails. Um, so we have that bill now before us, so please present your bill and introduce your witnesses. Thank you very much, colleagues. Uh, I'd like to introduce House File 3224, which essentially resurrects the tractor rollover protection pilot program from 2016 and establishes a $500,000 uh, amount for the purposes of um, safety grants to be allowed to be uh, for farmers, and then $250,000 for educational programs. Uh, it's a pretty simple bill. Um, I've got a, um, got a whole bunch of students uh, that are here today from St. Peter High School, uh, from Nicollet County, where I represent. Um, the majority of them wrote letters uh, to me asking that uh, Senator Nick Frentz and I do something um, to, to turn this tragedy that happened in Nicollet County back in August into something positive. Um, back in August 14th, we lost a young man in our, in our district, uh, Landon Graham, in a grain bin accident. And um, he was a high school senior. And the, the folks that are with us today are from the St. Peter High School, um, good friends of Landon's. Beside me, I've got Michelle Graham. Um, that would be Landon Graham's mother. And James Graham, that's uh, Landon's brother. And um, I'm asking today that we uh, we have um, some testimony, and uh, we talk about how we can pass some grain bin safety legislation, uh, Landon's law, we're calling it, um, to be passed. And so um, I would like to turn it over in the interest of time to Michelle and James, and uh, they can go from there. Well, first of all, welcome to the committee, and our deepest condolences to you from, from the entire committee. We, it, these tragedies affect all of us, but certainly as a family member, you are deeply impacted. So our, our deepest and most sincere condolences. And when you're ready, please just um, go ahead and... I, I, I'm sorry. I'm, this has been since August that I've been fighting for this. So it's, to get to this point is really surreal. Well, well, again, we appreciate that you've traveled here to be able to provide testimony. Thank you. This is my son, Landon. He's a statistic, but he is also a son, a brother, a friend, a classmate. I don't want his death to be in vain. We have to make changes to farming. Safety measures are so important. It's long overdue that these, say, these equipment that the farmers are working with have proper safety applied to existing equipment that they have. They're not in the financial spot to replace their equipment. The equipment needs to be adapted. It, um, our son was caught in a sweep auger. It was a gear-driven sweep offer, auger that caught his legs. And he succumbed to his injuries in a green bin alone for hours alone. OSHA's regulations say that at all times two people should be together. But this farming operation, 
I don't want to throw anybody under the bus, but there's a lot of different farming operations out there that are large farms. Nowadays, you don't find a 200-acre farm that is economically making it. These farms are growing to a size that is probably something that nobody can ever imagine that their equipment out in the fields could be $2 million or more running up and down the field. But these farmers that are running this equipment are also claiming to be small farmers, which are falling under OSHA's regulations where they don't have to come out and investigate my son's death, which I believe was preventable. If this farmer would have been following OSHA's regulations of the buddy system, possibly my son may be alive today and we, I wouldn't be here. I would fall asleep at night hearing him crying for me. out of the womb farming. I mean, he, the first words were <laughs> 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 And that's what his father and I wanted him to pursue when he was, we put our money into the farms for our next generation. James isn't a farmer, he was a Power Ranger freak. <laughs> 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 and we are not going to make him follow something that's our dream, not his. So in turn, we have to make adjustments to our farming. We're hog farmers. We are selling our hog farms. We can't do it alone anymore. But this operation where my son was killed at goes on farming like there was nothing that happened because he is protected by workman's comp and OSHA, which I believe needs to be updated to modern day. It's time, it's been 60 years in the making of getting this updated to the times that we are dealing with now. Farming has changed. The laws need to be changed too, to protect us also. We struggled. Yes. Thank you again for, for coming forward and sharing your story. Very tragic story. Does James, would you like to speak as well? Yeah. Hello, I am James Gron. I'm a senior at St. Peter High School and the brother of Landon Gron. Me and Landon both grow up on the uh, farm, working on it every day. And uh, we have multiple grain bins right in our front yard and they're, they look innocent enough, you don't see the danger that they hold inside and you just don't, you just don't know the danger until it's right in your face. Um, um, growing up, you talk to farmers, you, everybody knows somebody um, and it's almost come as a fact of life and I don't think that it needs to be. We, we shouldn't think about trying to prevent it happening, but what do we do when it does? And I think that this is a great way to try and break that, try and get over that hump of just hoping it doesn't happen to what do we do when it does? Yes, thank you. That is, that is the idea. And uh, another thing I wanted to add was, you know, there are so many different ideas that I alone have come up with for safety that could be implemented on a farm. I'm not a farm girl. I grew up in town, a small little town in South Dakota called Ipswich. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a town of about 800 people. I never grew up around farming. I married into it. And I can see from even our son's death, the way he died, 
This sweep auger needs to be covered fully from one end to the other. It doesn't need to be made out of steel or anything. It needs to, it needs to make enough room for grain to go through, but not a foot or a hand or to be caught so someone could get killed. This was not an entrapment. My son was found on an empty grain bin floor. Mm -hmm. Very little grain in the bin. He shouldn't have been in. So that's, I also am working with an engineer on making um, a life-saving bracelet for farmers, similar to an iWatch medical alert bracelet, such something similar to that where a farmer working alone, I would, they could plug it in like an eye watch, put it on in the morning as they go out if they're working alone. They get into trouble. They can hit one button, will turn a signal to an antenna. It'll turn off the power to the equipment. Another button to push 911. They have a chance. There's my, the engineer that I'm working with is my brother. He said this is so simple, he does not understand why this hasn't been um, a reality already. <laughs> and another thing is like the safety harnesses. I've talked to Farm Bureau shortly after my son's death, which is um, an audience of <coughs> mostly over 70s, which are still farming. And I asked them, would you put on a harness, a safety harness that might take you 10, 15 minutes to put on for what you believe is a five minute job. Mm -hmm. There wasn't a hand raise. It has to be something simple. You know, it, it's just, I don't know, this is, I feel like, uh, the preventable needs to be prevented mm -hmm. if we can. And I'm a mama on a mission. I'm not going to stop here. I want it to go federally. And if Minnesota could be the start of this, to get this going across the country. I talked to a lady from Indiana lately, and I don't know if I'm going over my time either, but I have talked to a lady from Indiana lately that lost her 18-year-old son in a, in a grain entrapment in November. And so it's everywhere. It's not just here. It needs to go to the federal level where we get safety for farmers. It, it, we're, we're the backbone of this country, and people don't realize that chocolate milk doesn't come from a chocolate cow. You know, it, it comes down to the people need to understand how important farming is. And our farmers are not only dying from this, they're dying from the economic part of this, where they can't pay their bills. Their, their marriages are going down. This is very stressful on a marriage. I can understand that, definitely. Yes. So again, thank you for, for coming forward, for sharing your story, for um, there's just nothing that we can say that will make it easier, but, no. but we, feel for you. Our hearts are breaking. Uh, Representative Brand. After the, uh, after the death of Landon, the Northland community came together and they, they lined up a whole bunch of tractors next to the road. The community came together. That was a show of support for the my family. Just like today with the St. Peter students that showed up, again, the community comes together. It's really one of the attributes of my district that I really enjoy. And so I'm hoping that my community here today will also come together. We can we can pass this bill and, you. Uh, and allocate the money for safety. And so, thank you. Before you do, I know that um, Josie Linetti also wanted to oh, provide sure. some testimony. So, we'll um, have her come down to testify from, from Minnesota Farm, Farm Bureau and Stu Laurie from Farmers Union. Yes, okay. Welcome to the committee. Josie. I'll be brief, Madam Chair. Uh, members of the committee, Josie Linetti with the Minnesota Farm Bureau. Um, we thank Representative Brand for bringing this bill forward today. 
Um, we've certainly heard of the serious and continued financial and emotional challenges in agriculture. And Minnesota Farm Bureau is a grassroots general farm organization. We have 78 county farm bureaus. And I just wanted to briefly touch on the activities that our county farm bureaus do in terms of safety. Um, they've assisted with 24 farm safety camps, reaching nearly 5,000 students and nearly 400 adults. Um, our Minnesota Farm Bureau Foundation, in partnership with Turtle Plastics, has donated 10 grain bin rescue tubes to community fire departments throughout Minnesota. So, and there's a number of other things that I could discuss as well, but we're here today um, just in support of Representative Brand's bill and the importance of having this conversation on farm safety. Uh, we support efforts to reduce farm injuries and death through engineering, education, and voluntary programs. So really, Representative Brand, thank you for bringing this bill forward. We appreciate it. Thanks, Madam Chair. Thank you, Ms. Linetti. And uh, Mr. Lurie. Thank you, Chair Poppy and members of the committee. For the record, my name is Stu Lurie. I'm the Government Relations Director for Minnesota Farmers Union. And just want to add uh, our voice as Farmers Union and strong support for this bill. Um, I know, Mrs. Grant, uh, we have a grassroots development uh, process for a policy, too, and our, our members, a number of them, brought your letter to, to, to that meeting to discuss and said that this needs to be at the center of what we, we work on um, this session. And so we're here to follow you and Representative Brand and, and, and Senator Frentz, and, and thank you so much for your leadership and are eager to express our support for this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I would concur. It's the center of the work, and it's... Um, the heart of our work certainly is to make sure that we have um, our, our farmers are safe and that farm families aren't needing to deal with these tragedies. Um, Representative Brand, so you'd like to? Yes, I'd like to renew my motion to hold the bill over for possible inclusion in the supplemental finance bill. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Brand, for bringing this bill. Thank you, Mrs. Grant, and, and to James for coming to share the story. And thank you to the St. Peter students. Um, you know, it's, it's a tough day, and I know it was, it's been a tough number of weeks. So our hearts are with you. Thank you. Thank you. So the, seeing no further discussion, House File 3224, it will be, um, as amended, is laid over. <coughs>